Hi, it's Lucy and today I'm here to do a reading vlog, but not just any reading vlog, I'm doing a reading arcs reading vlog. This has been a trend as of lately to like read your arcs and talk about them in one video. So that's what I'm going to be doing. The first person I saw do a video like this was Chelsea Dolling Reads back in June or May or July, earlier in the summer. The theme for this video is reading arcs by black authors. And all three of these books come out in July. Um, no, what? All three of these books come out on September 24th. With any luck, that is the day you're watching this video. <laughs> but hopefully it is close to the date. Hopefully it's not October already, maybe. We'll see. But yeah, so let's just talk about the three books that I have to read. Two of them are physical arcs and one of them is an e-arc that I got on NetGalley and I have actually already started one of these books because I didn't really have the idea to do this video until I was halfway through that book and I was like oh I should just include it so I'm going to include it. I'll talk about that book last because then I'll also tell you how I've been feeling about it. So the first book is Slay by Brittany Morris. This follows Kira Johnson who is one of the only black kids at her high school and she is an honor student and doing really well at school but at home she is actually the game creator of a game called Slay which is a massively multiplayer online card game. It's like a role-playing card game. I'm excited to learn more about the game because I kind of want to play it but basically Slay gets a lot of media attention after a teen is killed over a dispute in the game and Slay is labeled a lot of horrible things like that it's racist and exclusionist and a horrible like violent game for thugs and stuff and so Kira has to deal with that and try and figure out how she can like save her game's reputation and save her game. The second book that I have is Who Put This Song On? by Morgan Parker. This follows a black girl who is dealing with kind of finding herself and also dealing with depression and once again she's a black teenage girl and she knows what it's like to be the only black kid in a lot of scenarios and according to the synopsis that's going to be an important part of the book and yeah I really am looking forward to reading a book about a black teenage girl dealing with a mental illness because in the black community can be really demonized so I like having that representation in there and I'm excited to read it. And the last book that I am currently reading actually is Obviously by Akila Hughes. This is Akila Hughes's memoir slash essay collection. Akila is a YouTuber slash comedian type person. I still don't really know how to describe her. In the bio on the back it says that she's a writer, comedian, and YouTuber. So those things. And yeah, I think she's really funny. When I watched her YouTube videos online, and I also follow her on Twitter, and I think she's funny there as well. And so far, I'm on page 139 of this book, and I really, really enjoy it. I think it's really funny. There have been like a few laugh out loud moments in here, so I'm really enjoying it. So far, there hasn't been anything that I didn't like, like she hasn't said anything that I wasn't a fan of or anything. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I do enjoy memoirs of anyone honestly just because I think they're fun to read. I like learning about other people's lives. It's fun to get to know her life. She grew up in Kentucky and so she writes a lot about being one of the only black kids at her school and how her family was different from other people's families and like how people treated her and things and there was a really nice hashtag relatable chapter about acne because as you can see I do suffer from acne still at 23 years old and I've had acne since I was in fourth grade so yeah, she just talks about what it's like growing up with acne, I guess, or just living, okay? My food is done in the oven, so, okay, stop, shut up. Okay, uh, I have to go get my food out of the oven, but yeah, so I'm really enjoying this so far, and I'll update you guys probably when I'm closer to finish with this book, or we'll just see. It has been multiple days since I started this vlog. Normally, I feel like I will update you guys as I have things to say about the book, but I really didn't have a whole lot to say. I was already halfway through, obviously, by Keely Hughes when I started this vlog, and yeah, I pretty much said everything I had to say. And so today I finished it. I finished it this morning. Uh, I really should have filmed this clip when I got home, when it, there was light outside instead of my artificial yellow light, but we're here now. Bad quality and all. So I finished, obviously. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty funny, actually. Uh, Akila self-identifies as a comedian, and I agree. I mean, I haven't seen her do any stand-up, but like I mentioned, I have watched her YouTube videos and I really like those. Yeah, so I thought it was pretty funny. I enjoyed the memoir type. I liked hearing about her life. She, like I said, she grew up in Kentucky 
and yeah, it was fun to hear about it. It's a different life from what I lived. She talks about moving to New York in the second half because she moves to New York when she gets older after college sometime. And I thought that was fun as a person who's from New York. I do think it's interesting when people talk about their journey to New York, even though I don't live there anymore. Uh, what else is there to say? The only thing that I didn't like that much was the last essay. Not that I didn't like the last essay, I just am used to essay collections or like memoirs having more of a, a bang when they end. Not a bang, but it just felt like a weird essay to end on. Like it didn't feel like a closing essay. Maybe since this is the arc, they'll add one more or they rearrange the order maybe. So that could be fixed. I don't know. But that was really the only thing. And also I can foresee other people's problem being like there's no real like theme or anything. It's just talking about her life. The essays don't really flow all that they are chronological for the most part which I think helps it flow but they don't have there's no like central theme except for that they're all about Aquila. and some of them are shorter than others like if let's see if I can find one like this one the formatting can change because it's an arc but I think this will probably stay it seems like pretty finished but like this one it's just like a paragraph but then there are other essays that are like more long form and like what you're used to seeing so yeah, I think that's it. I enjoyed it. I gave it four stars and now I'm going to go to bed. I think the next book that I'm going to read is who put this song on. I forgot the author, but I'm going to be reading my e-arc of it and I'm actually going to really try to get this up on September 24th. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Today is the 18th, but I'm also about to go to bed, but I'm just going to try and like power through the next two books and like really get through them so that I can have this video up the day they come out because I want to be a good reviewer for once. And yeah, so I'll, ch ch I'll ca I can't speak. I'll catch you guys in the next update. Good morning. It's 11 a.m. on Sunday, the 22nd of September. Um, like I said, I'm trying to get this video up on the 24th right now. That seems quite unlikely. I know I keep going back and forth. I started Who Put This Song On on Friday by, I forgot who it's by. I'll put the author on the over here and also the cover will be next to me hopefully if I'm not lazy while editing. I am liking it so far. I'm not that far in. I think I'm on like page 10 or something. So yeah, but so far we've seen our main character go to therapy um, and I wasn't a huge fan of it. I'm hoping that she switches therapists because right now it's not a very good representation of therapy. So yeah, hopefully later in the book she switches therapists, but that's the only thing I can think of. Um, our main character is depressed. I don't, I didn't say anything what this book is about. So who put this song on is about a teen black girl. I think she's 17 and she has depression. Basically she, it's about her kind of living her life with depression and she's going through a depressive episode. I think her family is like weird about it. Like they're supportive in that they're sending her to therapy, but they don't really understand it. Like they don't understand why she's depressed or understand how like it's affecting her really like so far what I've read her mom like made her get up and go to a party even though she really didn't want to and it also said that her therapist thought it was good for her and I know that like forcing yourself to do things you don't want to when you don't want to when you're going through something can make you feel better but I don't know I it didn't seem all that supportive to me yeah and she is also dealing with like she lives in an area that is predominantly white and not black so she's dealing with that kind of stuff and she also goes to like a Christian school or something which yeah there's a lot going on um, and her family also has like a lot to do with not a lot to do with God but like they're like you can pray away the depression kind of so yeah we'll see where the book goes not sure how much of like my regular life I'm supposed to be showing you guys in this vlog because it's supposed to be like about the books but it is a vlog so yeah but right now I'm going to go to Starbucks and get breakfast and I'm going to try and plan and read more of Who Put This Song On. So I'm going to bring my bullet journal and plan some stuff out. And I'm going to try and get like halfway through Who Put This Song On because I'm still in my head attempting to get this video up by Tuesday, the 24th. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see about that. And then when I get back, I'm going to try and edit a video because I still need to put my August wrap up today. Last night, I went to a concert. I'll maybe put a clip in of that here. I went to see Marina, formerly known as Marina and the Diamonds. <laughs> I feel like I have to say that because I feel like 
people may have heard of Marina and the Diamonds, but people won't know that she changed her name to just Marina. So yeah, but I went to her concert. It was fun. So I, oh, I almost always pay for seats because I hate GA, like I hate general admission at concerts. I hate standing for so long, but it doesn't even matter because with seats, people will just stand anyway in the balcony. And I'm like, we all paid to sit down. Why are you standing anyway? But so you can't really see anything unless you're standing also because everyone in front of you is standing. And I got these earrings as merch. I kind of by accident, like I'm trying to avoid buying t-shirts as merch because I have so many t-shirts. Right now I'm wearing a the Meadows concert shirt, which, or festival shirt, which was like two or three years ago. But yeah, most of my t-shirts are like merch. So I'm trying to avoid buying t-shirts as merch. So she had these earrings and I was like, oh, that's cute. I did not realize how big they were until he handed them to me and I had already started putting my credit card in. So yeah. Friday was my birthday. I don't have any like video or stuff, but I have a picture of the cheese plates I made. So that will be inserted right here. A bunch of my friends came over and we just sat around and drank. I still don't really have a lot of furniture. So if we sat on the floor, but it was a good time. And they also built my table and two chairs. Here's my table and two chairs that my friends built while they were here for my birthday. Um, I hate building furniture. Don't mind all the garbage behind it. One of my friends gave me like a housewarming gift. It's like two unicorn salt and pepper shakers. Really cute. But yeah, I made cheese plates and we had wine and the cheese was really okay. Really good. I bought cheese that I wanted and then they brought cheese that they wanted. So yeah, one of my friends brought brie and I learned that I hate brie. Brie is the most disgusting thing I've ever put in my mouth. I literally almost threw up. So yeah, it tastes like milk, but solid to me and I don't like the taste of milk. So that was not good. So yeah, I do not like Brie, learned that at 23 years. Oh, I'm 23, by the way. My I said my birthday was Friday, which was the 20th of September and I turned 23. So yeah, one year older, another year wiser, not really, but older. And yeah, now I'm gonna go to Starbucks because I just spent so long updating you guys. Hi, okay, so it is the 23rd of September, I almost forgot what month it is. I'm definitely not getting this video up by tomorrow because I am 30% of the way through of Who Put This Song On by Maureen Parker. I don't think I said who the author was in the last clip where I talked about it. But yeah, I'm a little over 30%, maybe 35%. I am enjoying it now, I think. Like definitely this is for like weird kid, like teenagers who read this who are kind of like the outcasts or anything will definitely appreciate this. I'm not sure how it falls in though because I feel weird, I guess, rating. I mean, I'm not done with it, so I'm not rating it yet, but I think I will feel weird rating this book because the main character is definitely semi-autobiographical. Did I say that correctly? I hope. Uh, the main character is named Morgan Parker, actually, and so there's that. And the, in the author's note, the author says that they're not, like, not everything in the book is true, but a lot of it is based on stuff that happened. I think I'm paraphrasing, uh, but yeah. So that's definitely gonna be weird right now. Yeah, I'm enjoying it, but it's just like weird. The love interest is kind of weird. I don't like how he talks. Like he seems nice. I guess I can't tell you a lot, but it doesn't seem like he's gonna like fix her depression or anything, but it's just like another person she knows. I'm having trouble with the relationship she's having with like other kids at her school because I don't really understand who her friends are or how she feels about them. It seems kind of like wishy-washy, like one second, she's like, I have no friends. And the other second, these people are her friends, but it's like, she almost doesn't know them. But on the other hand, she does know them. And I don't know if that's weird characterization or if like, I don't know what that is. So yeah, so those are my two things, but yeah, right now it's fine. Uh, yeah. So I guess that's my update for now. Uh, I think I'm gonna try and read some more. I'm gonna watch a couple of YouTube videos, but I think I'm gonna try and go to bed early. It's eight o'clock right now and just read some more. I think if I really wanted to like stay up until like midnight, I could probably finish this book, but I'm not gonna do that. 
I value sleep, but I think I'm gonna either try and read some more or like cut this vlog together. It's the next day. I'm walking to work right now. I just got off the train, blah, blah, blah. I hate vlogging in public, but I'm trying to do it. So I'm uh, obviously still reading Who Put This Song On. I was reading it on the train, which is why I wanted to update. Now, reading vlogs are supposed to be like catching my like real feelings in real time, mostly. So yeah, I wanted to talk about this a little bit, but basically uh, the part I'm on the main character, Morgan, is in her government slash history class, and during the time this takes place, it's right before the 2008 election, so they're talking about Barack Obama running for president, and, like, the topic of the class, like, her teacher is obviously kind of racist, and the topic of the class is, like, is America ready for a black president? And since Morgan is one of the only black people in the class. The way the teacher treats her, like the book like recognizes, I guess, or like mentions how basically the teacher is super Republican and basically uses Morgan to teach the liberal side of politics to the class. Because like I mentioned, this book, she does go to like a Christian school and the book does also deal with religion. I'll talk about that later. And I don't know, just reading that reminded me of being in school and being one of the only black people in class. When the 2008 election was going on, I was um, I was in middle school. I think I was in like eighth grade or some. No, yeah, I was in middle school. Uh, so I must have been in like sixth grade, 2008, yeah, two, sixth or seventh grade. So I didn't really have to deal a lot with that, but it just reminds me of like being the only black kid in school. But every school establishment, if that makes sense, like I've been to, I've been one of the only black kids in class. And yeah, and it just reminded me of being in like my high school government class and like we weren't talking like about the election, but we were just talking about like identity politics and stuff. And it was, I like have a vivid memory of me and the other black kid in class just turning around like literally every other sentence that was said in class. Cause like it was discussion based class and lots of kids were saying some fucked up shit and we couldn't really do anything or say anything cause we're the only black kids. And like we would try and say things. And I went to a pretty liberal school, so it was really just the kids who were like felt like they had to hide their liberal or their not liberalness what do you call that conservativeness and they were like really letting it all out in that class why why is the light not going i've been standing at this crosswalk for three minutes now and it also reminded me uh even though this isn't exactly it but there was like a little section on the n-word because something happens with her younger brother and it just reminds me of reading Huckleberry Finn in class and my teacher being like, I'm going to say the N-word because it is part of a historical accuracy and I guess if you have a problem, he, I guess he wasn't as uh, combative, but it felt like that to me because I'm pretty sure I was the only black person in that class. So what was I gonna do? And I remember we watched like a whole documentary thing about um, a black girl and her mom who didn't want to be reading that in class and it was like really posed as they were wrong for having those feelings for not wanting to relive this kind of thing in class especially when you're one of the only black kids sorry i'm walking now the lighting is going to change a little bit i was trying to wait till i got in the shade but yeah um but yeah what i was saying especially when you're one of the only black kids and it's just not a thing for white kids like you'll never have to sit in a class and hear like racial slurs that were directed at you over and over and you just We'll never have to sit there and be okay with that or like if you say anything you're causing trouble or anything and i don't know just reading this book kind of just reminded me of that at the time i'm not here to like discuss whether huck finn should be taught in schools or anything but i think if it is taught in schools um i'm not saying read the censored version or anything but i don't think when you read it out loud in class you really have to say the n-word that's my stance on that do you really have to say it out loud i don't know but yeah, it just reminded me of that and I wanted to talk about that a little. So I finished Who Put This Song On by Morgan Parker. So here is my review now, I guess. I don't know. Um, but when did I last talk to you guys about it? I think that was like I was a little over halfway through and basically the second half I think I liked more than the first half. The issue with the book I'm having is that I don't know how I feel about it. I finished it like, like a couple of an hour ago or so. And yeah, I just, I don't really know how I feel about it. I don't think there was anything wrong with it. And I liked it. I really, I did like it. It just felt like kind of meandering, I guess. Normally I really like books without plots. So that's why I feel like I have 
confusion. Like I don't mind when a book doesn't really have like one thing going on in it, but for this one, it just didn't feel cohesive enough, I guess. I think I'm gonna give it three and a half stars. I like the ending. I really think this book will be good for teenagers who like feel like they don't fit in. I guess that's the big thing about Morgan. A lot of what she is dealing with is the fact that she feels like she doesn't fit in based on like the music she likes, how she feels like dressing. She doesn't fit in one thing. She's one of the only black kids in the school, which the book does talk about a lot. And I I think I mentioned this earlier in the vlog, she goes to a Christian school and she's having trouble deciding how she feels about God and like everything and the whole idea of hell really does affect her and her depression and I enjoyed seeing that. I think the biggest, not really issue, but like the biggest thing keeping me from giving it the full four stars, I would probably give it four stars on Goodreads, but like I'll round up. I think the biggest thing is her friendships, I just felt really disconnected from her relationships with her friends. I just didn't understand how she felt about them. I mentioned this in the beginning of the book. In the beginning of the book, it seemed almost like she didn't know them. Like I wouldn't have realized that most of these people have been her best friends since like childhood basically. Or I think they have, it was a little unclear, but she's clearly known them for a long time. But it seems like in the beginning, they were not close at all. But then like the next chapter, they're like, oh, we're best friends, love you. And she calls like one of her friends, like lover and stuff, like how teenage girls do sometimes. And it just felt really odd to me. Like it just felt weird how disconnected she felt. And maybe that was because of the portrayal of depression, since depression can make you like apathetic and everything. But it just felt really odd to me. I liked how it like culminated in the end. And there's an author's note in the end, because like I mentioned, a lot of this book is like based on Morgan Parker. And she kind of talks about how she grew up and like how some of the characters are based on people. And some of the characters are like out amalgamations of other people and things like that. So I thought that was really cool to see. And it's like really good vision for teenagers to see I think because it's like oh like it's like she made it through this which I thought was like really inspiring and stuff and the other thing I don't know how I feel about is I feel like this book made me more sad I don't know if it's the book's fault this whole week for a couple of months really I haven't been feeling the greatest mental health wise but this whole but this week has really been like a culmination and I don't know and if it's because of the book nothing incredibly sad happens in this book but maybe it's just me like personally reading about depression and things was making me feel worse I don't know I maybe I'm just blaming it on the book and like it's just my own mental health is deteriorating that's fun but yeah i just want to put that morning there was nothing particularly triggering in this book i don't think so it might have just been like the book actually hit me closer than i thought like emotionally it hit me but like mentally it didn't hit me you know like i i don't realize it's hitting me until i'm crying so yeah but like i never cried at the book so there's that there is I think a trigger warning for self-harm but nothing about it is graphic or anything like that like it's just mentioned that something happened but it doesn't say like we don't know exactly what happened and it's not described in any way maybe it is because I related to it so much that it I think maybe it put me in a worse place mentally I don't think I related as much because I think I, the parts that I related, I think I talked a little bit about this, is just being the only black girl in a lot of situations. It just happens a lot. It just happened a lot in high school and middle school. And at the time, I don't think I've registered. And Morgan also talks about that a little bit in the author's note because Morgan, the book character, does a lot of research on like the Black Panthers and like black history and stuff because she feels like she's not getting enough of that in school. And like Morgan, the author, mentions that she didn't learn of the Black Panthers until she was well into college. I don't remember what my point of that was, but yeah, that happened, I guess. Um, but yeah, I wasn't actually the weird kid in like high school or anything. Like I was weird in the sense that I guess I was kind of nerdy, but I wasn't like emo or anything. Like Morgan self describes as like emo punk. Like I think if you're like that kind of weird kid, I don't know how else to like. I'm not using it in a negative way. Like it's just like oh, I listen to like emo music and like music that's different from like my peers and stuff, and like I dress different and stuff like that like that kind of thing I didn't feel like I was that in high school I honestly didn't feel like 
oh, nobody understands me and things like that. Like Morgan definitely feels that a lot. And I do know that a lot of teenagers feel like that. So I think that would be good for them. And I feel like this review is going nowhere. But yeah, I thought it was well written. My only issues was, I guess, the relationships and stuff didn't feel as fleshed out as I wanted them to. And her family relationship, I guess it kind of mimics real life where like sometimes there's times when they're not that helpful or like your family isn't that helpful or you feel like they don't understand you. But then there's times where you're all sitting and laughing together. I think that's all I have to say about the book. Like I said, three and a half stars, but I will round it up to four stars on Goodreads because I do think other people should read this. I want other people to read this. I think if you think you'll enjoy a book like this, then I think you should read it. And yeah, so I think I'm gonna end the vlog here. I know I was supposed to read another book. I was supposed to read Slay by Brittany Morris, but like I mentioned, my mental health hasn't been the best this week and I really don't wanna prolong this vlog because I don't have any other videos to put up this week. And I don't wanna like stretch it out even more because I don't really feel like reading Slay right now. I don't think that'll put me in a better mindset and I wanna read books that will make me happier. So I won't be reading it like this weekend or anything. And like I said, I don't wanna prolong this vlog. So I will have only read two books. I will have read Obviously and Who Put This Dog On? And they were both good books. I gave Obviously four stars in case you forgot. I do plan on doing a, another reading arcs by black authors vlog. I don't know if Slay will be in it because I do wanna kind of keep it like relevant. I will be reading Slay eventually. And yeah, but I am also planning to do like a weekend reading vlog because I don't know, I feel like I have so many ideas for a vlog and I was like, I should just do one. And so stay tuned for that. I don't know when that will be coming, but yeah. Um, what else is there to say? Uh, oh, um, the links, if you want to buy either of the books, they came out this past Tuesday on the 24th. So uh, I have, will have affiliate links if you are interested in buying them. You don't have to do whatever your heart desires. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. That also helps subscribe to my channel. I put up videos where I talk about books all the time. Hit the notification bell so you can be notified every time I post a video. And I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.